The most crucial inquiry you should consistently pose to yourself is, how deeply do you desire it? Without clear, specific goals for your life, you may find yourself inadvertently working for those who do. This appears to be the fate of many individuals. Surprisingly, only 5% of people actually set goals for themselves. It's a conscious decision you make. Either you establish goals and take control of your life, or you don't and consequently end up working for those who do. The small percentage of individuals who set goals are the ones who wield authority, while the majority who don't are merely drifting along with whatever life presents them, working for those who have clear objectives. When you invest effort into pursuing your goals, they, in turn, reciprocate by propelling you forward. Whatever positive things we construct ultimately contribute to shaping us. The primary rationale for setting goals is to inspire personal growth and development. When you are inspired by your goals, when you truly believe in them, and when you take action upon them, there's no limit to what you can achieve. Goals function as a magnetic force. The stronger and more purposeful they are, the more resolutely they pull you towards them. If you genuinely desire something, you will find a way to achieve it. Conversely, if you lack genuine desire, excuses will abound. Imagine yourself on a journey in a foreign land or another state without any signs or maps to guide you. How long do you think it would take to reach your destination without clear goals? It's akin to embarking on a journey without knowing which direction to take. You may meander, take wrong turns, and risk getting lost, belonging your journey or potentially never reaching your destination. However, with clear goals, akin to specific destinations marked on a map, it's like possessing a clear roadmap guiding your way. With this clarity, you're far more likely to reach your destination efficiently and successfully. By embracing the role of a goal setter, you're essentially arming yourself with a potent tool that can smoothen and enhance your journey towards success. Imagine having a specific destination in mind, a detailed map, and clear road signs guiding every step of the way. How much faster do you think you'd reach your destination? Understanding the law of cause and effect is straightforward. Your belief and absolute clarity regarding the goal you wish to achieve constitute the cause, and the effect is the manifestation of your goal in your life. What you genuinely believe in and are clear about shapes your reality. Your beliefs have the power to shape your reality. When you wholeheartedly believe in your goal and remain focused on it, you begin to perceive the world in a different light becoming more attuned to paths and opportunities that can lead you towards your goal. It's as if your belief serves as a guiding force, aiding you in navigating life towards your desired outcome. Now, let's discuss some essential principles that can aid you in achieving your goals. Music. Firstly, there's the rule of expectations, which entails strongly believing that everything happening in your life is guiding you towards your goal. Then there's the law of attraction, which asserts that you attract people, ideas, and situations aligned with your primary objective. Next, there's the law of the subconscious and the law of correspondence, which implies that external manifestations reflect internal goals, especially your objectives. Another critical principle is the law of subconscious activity, emphasizing the importance of continually presenting a clear picture of your goal to your mind thereby facilitating thoughts and actions conducive to achieving your goal. Lastly, there's the law of habit. This law suggests that if you continuously contemplate your goal, it gradually becomes a habit to focus on it every day. Our method of setting goals entails seven steps, each designed to help you plan what you wish to achieve in your life. The initial step is to precisely discern what you desire. Surprisingly, many individuals fail to invest the time required for this crucial step. Only a small minority, approximately the top 10% of people, possess clarity regarding their desires. Therefore, ask yourself, what are your financial aspirations? What are your health objectives? What about your familial aspirations? It's imperative to be unequivocal and specific about your desires. Remember, your subconscious and superconscious minds can effectively assist you in achieving a goal only when the goal itself is crystal clear. You hold the power to attain anything you can imagine and consistently envision. However, clarity is paramount. You must have a clear vision in your mind, understanding precisely what you desire and comprehending the steps necessary to attain it. Let your actions, words, and thoughts reflect this clarity.
It's about maintaining clarity in every facet of your life, your goals, plans, and actions. When you possess clarity and focus, you become unstoppable. Speak confidently, walk with purpose, converse with conviction, and act decisively towards your dreams. Setting goals commences with clearing your mind of any limitations and contemplating all possibilities. Your initial task is to unleash your imagination, allowing it to soar freely and dream expansively. Ponder deeply about what you genuinely desire in every aspect of your life. Concentrate on what resonates with your innermost being. Envision yourself accomplishing your deepest desires, whether it involves personal growth, possession of assets, or undertaking specific endeavors. The pivotal aspect is to be unequivocal regarding your aspirations and ambitions. Once you have a precise understanding of what you desire, you can begin taking steps towards actualizing it. Do not restrain your dreams. Envision a life brimming with boundless opportunities by establishing clear goals and steadfastly believing in your ability to achieve them. Visualize every aspect falling seamlessly into place as you desire. Picture yourself leading the life you've always envisioned, replete with fulfilling relationships, robust health, your dream vehicle, and a residence of your choosing. Imagine these scenarios with such vividness that they feel palpably real. Dedicate time each day to visualize your goals and witness as they gradually materialize. The second step involves transcribing your goals onto paper. Astonishingly, nearly 3% of adults allocate time to undertake this activity, while the remainder inadvertently end up working for those who do. Writing down your goals transcends being a mere task. It is a profound activity that engages both your mind and body. This activity, termed psychoneuromotor, entails physically inscribing your goals on paper. It is akin to programming your goal into your mental framework. Once articulated on paper, your subconscious mind embarks on relentless efforts, working ceaselessly 24 hours a day towards their realization. Therefore, it is imperative to articulate your goals in writing and ensure their clarity and specificity. Here's a valuable tip. Each morning, Take a moment to rewrite your primary goals as if you've already achieved them. This practice reinforces your goals in your mind and sustains your focus on attaining them. It serves as a daily affirmation of your aspirations, instilling a steadfast belief in their attainability. Hence, every morning, with pen and paper in hand, articulate your goals in a manner that evokes their tangible realization. Writing down all your goals is paramount. Failure to do so renders them mere wishes devoid of power. By committing your goals to writing, you endow them with strength and tangibility. This exercise requires minimal time, perhaps two to four minutes, or at most, five. You can encapsulate all your goals in a single paragraph. For instance, if your aim is to earn $60,000 annually, simply inscribe. I earn $60,000 per year. If excelling in real estate is your ambition, you might write, I'm skilled at selling houses in my area. If you're aiming for a specific way or lifestyle, articulate your goals using sentences as though they're already true. This practice helps maintain clarity and focus on your goals, keeping them clear in your mind and aiding in your focus to achieve them. It may seem like a small task to do every day, but it can significantly contribute to getting closer to your dreams. Make it part of your morning routine to affirm your goals and start the day with a positive attitude. Similarly, in the evening, take another 5 to 10 minutes before bed instead of watching TV to unwind. Take a moment to reflect on your day. Start by reviewing your progress. Sit down and think about what you've achieved so far. Ask yourself, what did I do well today? What steps did I take that brought me closer to my goals? Then, consider what you could do differently if you could redo the day. If you make it a habit to ask yourself these questions over the next 30 days, you'll achieve more than you have in the past six months. It's an amazing method that can genuinely make a difference in your life. These simple practices help you stay focused, motivated, and on track toward your goals. So, give it a try and see the incredible results for yourself. Many people have tried writing down their goals on New Year's Day, then putting the list away and forgetting about it until the end of the year. Surprisingly, when they revisit the list, they find that about 80% of their goals have been achieved. 
What's even more interesting is how these goals are often achieved in unexpected and amazing ways. It's as if when you write down your goal, it sends a message to the universe, telling it what you want, and somehow everything falls into place to make those desires come true. So, the next time you write down your goals, remember that you're not just writing on paper. You're initiating a powerful process that can help you achieve great things. When you write down big, challenging goals, it starts a chain reaction of good things happening. Firstly, your belief in yourself gets stronger just by writing down your ambitious goals. You start feeling more confident. Setting goals takes bravery, and just by doing it, you're making yourself more confident. It's like a circle. The more confident you feel about setting goals, the more your confidence grows. Writing down your goals also makes you see yourself in a better light. It feels good to say what you really want and write it down. This makes you feel better about yourself, and you start seeing yourself differently. The second reason why writing down goals is so powerful is because it taps into your mental and emotional strengths. When you set goals, it's like flipping a switch that activates your mind and body. You'll feel a surge of energy both mentally and physically. Your heart rate might increase, and you might find yourself breathing a little faster. Have you ever noticed that when you're feeling a bit sluggish or unmotivated, Making a list of things to do suddenly gives you a burst of energy? It's true. Here's why. Your mind works in a way that when you write down a goal clearly, you're essentially programming your brain to figure out how to make it happen. It's like you're sending a signal to your subconscious that says, this is important. Let's make it a reality. Successful people move forward quickly toward what they want to achieve. They set clear goals, write them down, and this dramatically increases their chances of success. It gives them clarity and activates other powers they might not even know they have yet. Many people avoid writing things down. They might say they're too busy or that they already know what they want. You might have heard someone say, Oh, I know what my goals are. I want to be rich, thin, happy, successful, and travel the world. But here's the thing. Those aren't really goals. They're more like wishes or fantasies. They're similar to what people in mental asylums might dream about, just illusions. So, if you truly want to turn your dreams into reality, it's essential to clarify your goals and put them in writing. This simple act can make a world of difference in how you approach your ambitions and ultimately achieve success. Setting goals increases your chances of success by a significant margin. While there are no guarantees in life, having well-defined goals can make a big difference in achieving what you want. The third step is about setting a deadline for your goal. Make sure it's a really clear and specific target. This deadline gives you a push for both your subconscious and superconscious minds. It boosts your motivation and pushes you to work hard towards achieving your goal, so it's important to set that deadline. If your goal is quite big, you can even set smaller deadlines along the way. Break your big goal into smaller parts and set deadlines for each of them. Then, keep reminding yourself about those deadlines regularly. This way, you'll stay focused and keep moving forward towards your goal. Step number four involves making a list. Take some time to jot down everything you can think of that might help you reach your goal. Keep writing until your list is full. If you come up with new ideas later on, add them to your list. There's something really great about breaking things down into a list. Henry Ford, a famous inventor, once said, even the biggest goal in the world can be achieved if you just break it down into enough small steps. It's like when people ask, how do you eat an elephant? The answer, of course, is one bite at a time, but you have to divide it into smaller bites first. So, making a list helps you see all the steps you need to take to reach your goal, making it more manageable and achievable. Start by creating a dream list. Imagine for a moment that you have no constraints like time, money, knowledge, connections, experience, or education. Pretend that anything you write down on your list is within your reach. Keep in mind that if you can clearly define and express it on paper, then it's possible for you to achieve it. Step number five is about organizing your list. But how do you organize it? Well, there are two main ways. First, you organize it by sequence. That means figuring out the order in which you need to do things. Second, you organize it by priority. What tasks are more important than others? Recall the 80-20th rule for a moment. 
This rule says that usually the first 20% of the things you do toward achieving a goal bring about 80% of the results. So, it's important to focus on those crucial tasks first. Once you've organized your list by sequence and priority, you'll have a plan. Having a goal and a plan can lead you to achieve incredible things, sometimes even things you never imagined possible. Step number six is all about taking action. It's time to do something and move forward. Take action quickly and don't hesitate. Start doing things right away to work towards your goal. Every small step you take brings you closer to achieving what you want, so don't wait around. Get started and make things happen. Taking action is the key to making your dreams a reality. Remember, achieving your dreams requires dedication and effort over time. It's not about wishing for something once and expecting it to happen magically. You must be willing to work hard and make sacrifices along the way. Now, here are two things you can do throughout your day to stay focused on your goals and financial success. First, make use of your time in the car. Instead of listening to music or just letting your mind wander, try listening to audio programs. Fill your drive with educational and motivational content that inspires you and pushes you closer to your goals. You'll be surprised how one powerful idea from an audio program can make a huge difference in your life. Secondly, when you contemplate your life, try envisioning it without any constraints. Let your mind wander freely and dream big. Visualize a life without boundaries where anything is possible. This exercise can help expand your thinking and open up new possibilities that you may not have considered before. By incorporating these practices into your daily routine, you'll keep your mind and emotions aligned with your goals and set yourself up for financial success. Here's a helpful exercise to manifest your dreams. Take a moment to write down 10 goals you want to achieve within the next year or so. It's quick to do and only takes a few minutes. Once you've made your list, examine it closely and ask yourself, if I could only achieve one goal from this list, which one would make the biggest positive difference in my life? Circle that goal. Now, that circled goal becomes your main focus, your definite purpose. Even though you can still work on other goals, this circled one is your primary target. Every single day, take action towards it. Keep this goal at the forefront of your thoughts. In the morning, ponder over it. Throughout the day, remember it. In the evening, review your progress towards it. By consistently focusing on this goal, you pave the way for its achievement and ultimately for transforming your life. In simpler terms, by regularly reminding yourself of your goals, you're sending out signals to the universe about what you want. Like a magnet, you start attracting opportunities and people that align with your desires. So, the more you focus on your goals and keep them fresh in your mind, the more likely you are to attract the right circumstances to help you achieve them. We've all experienced moments where we start getting curious about something, and suddenly, we find ourselves surrounded by books, articles, and people who share that interest. It's like the universe starts sending us everything we need to learn more about that topic. What's happening is you're creating this kind of invisible energy field around you. We can't really explain it scientifically, but it's like a vibe that goes out from you and brings back into your life everything you need to achieve your main goals. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. At the start of the year, write down your goals, seal them up, and then open them at the end of the year. Surprisingly, you'll find that you've actually achieved about 80% of those goals. Pretty incredible, right? But here's the thing. Most of us don't set enough goals, and the ones we do set aren't ambitious enough. We tend to underestimate what we're capable of achieving. So, imagine what could happen if we set more goals and aimed higher. We could accomplish even more than we ever thought possible. It's all about stretching ourselves and reaching for those big dreams. So, next time you sit down to set your goals, remember to aim high and believe in your ability to make them happen. Before you go to bed at night and as soon as you wake up in the morning, take a moment to think about your goals and picture them as if they're already real. Your subconscious mind responds best to affirmations and mental images that are in the present tense. So, it's important to visualize your goals as if they're happening right now. Before you fall asleep, imagine yourself achieving your goals and living the life you desire. Visualize every detail vividly, and when you wake up, start your day by filling your mind with positive mental images of your goals being realized. It's important to note that there are no unrealistic goals, 
only unrealistic timelines. This means that while your goals may be big and ambitious, it might take longer than you initially expect to achieve them. So, don't be discouraged if things don't happen overnight. Stay committed, keep pushing forward, and eventually, you'll see your dreams become a reality. And remember this. When circumstances change, it's important to go back to the drawing board and set new goals that align with the current situation. This doesn't mean giving up on your goals altogether. It just means adjusting them to fit the present realities. Recent findings by psychologists have revealed that when you're working towards something meaningful to you, your self-esteem and self-confidence get a boost. You feel happier, stronger, and more powerful. You become more creative, and your best qualities shine through. How can you push away all the bad stuff in your life? You focus on your goal. Whenever something brings you down or makes you feel bad, focus on your goals. Think about it, talk about it, and work on it because your mind can only handle one thought at a time. If you're really committed to reaching a particular goal and you think about it and work on it every day, eventually, all the other negative stuff will fade away. It's like making your goal the center of your attention, and everything else starts to lose its grip on you. There's a wonderful saying, when you turn toward the sunshine, the shadows fall behind you. It means that when you focus on positive things, the negative stuff fades away. So, when you start thinking about your goal, those shadows of negativity start to disappear. And if you begin telling yourself things like, I'm capable, I'm responsible, and I believe in myself, it's like cheering yourself on. You become your own biggest supporter, boosting your confidence and pushing those negative thoughts aside. Throughout your life journey, whenever you encounter new decisions to make or goals to set, Take some time to ponder over them using these seven simple stats. It's important to jot down your thoughts on paper and be open to adjusting your plans as you gain new insights. Keep refining your plans until they're fully developed, and then take bold action to bring them to fruition. Remember, the key is to approach each new phase of life with thoughtful consideration and a willingness to adapt as needed. Your ability to set goals and make plans for their accomplishment is the master skill of success. If you practice and get better at this skill, it will help you succeed more than anything else you learn. To get better, there isn't any of us who can't improve. So, embrace the idea of personal development and growth. That's what my teacher shared with me to change my life, starting just a few steps from here at that convention. I'm telling you, for things to get better, you've got to get better. Don't ask for the world to change out there. Ask for yourself to change in here. Don't wish for more favorable winds. We call that naive. Don't wish for better seeds. Wish for better soil. This is the only planet you got. Just ask that you can get wiser, stronger, and better able to take care of your own responsibilities. Get better at learning how to handle the seasons better. Let's go through them. Just get better at handling the winters. You can't change the winter. You can't change the seasons. But you can change yourself. What can I do about the upcoming winters of my life? The challenges I know I'm going to face. Here's what you can do. You can get wiser, stronger, and better. Make a list of that trio of words. Wiser, stronger, and better. Go home smarter than you came. Go home with more ideas than you came with. Next, get stronger. You can develop the muscle. You can develop the courage muscle. You can develop the inspiration muscle. You can develop the dedication muscle. You can get stronger. There's nobody here who can't get stronger. Next time we see you, you may not even recognize yourself. So strong you're going to become in terms of language style and personality. The ability to cope, the ability to handle anything that happens, no matter what happens. And the third one is to get better. We can all get better. I've gotten better. The first talk I gave, I stood up. My mind sat back down. But here's the secret to my success. I stood up and did it again. I stood up, and I did it again, and I did it again, and I did it again. All those many years ago, I did it when I was scared, and I did it when I didn't want to, and I did it when I was ill, and I did it when it didn't work well, and I did it when they didn't appreciate it, and I did it a lot of times when I didn't know much about what I was doing. I just did it anyway. And now, all these years later, I'm asked to walk on this stage with the greatest introduction I've ever had, the greatest response and welcome I've ever had. The greatest opportunity I've ever had to touch this many lives with a mixture of words, heart, and soul. I got better. 
I got better day by day and week by week and month by month. And I'm asking you to do the same thing, until you can develop a long arm and a long reach, until you can develop influence that won't quit. Touch people next year you couldn't touch this year. Touch people now you couldn't touch before. Conduct a meeting now you couldn't conduct before. Heart and soul mixed in there that wasn't there before. I'm asking all of you to get better. In spite of the winters, in spite of the downturns, the money downturns, the social downturns, the personal downturns, whatever it is, just get stronger, get better. The key is not to wish for a better winter. The key is to wish for more strength, more wisdom, more courage. Get better, get wiser, get stronger. Here's the second lesson. Learn to take advantage of the spring. Spring means opportunity, and we've got a fresh spring going here. It's called a spring like no other, an opportunity like no other for you. But here's the clue. Spring is not a guarantee of a harvest in the fall, the autumn harvest time. Here's what you must learn to do. Underline the two words. If you're taking notes, take advantage. Take advantage of the spring. Don't just be faked out by the spring because the nice weather has come. It looks like everything is going to be a lot better. The winter's finally passed. The spring is here. I'm telling you, that's not going to do it for you. Just because the spring is here, it's not going to do it for you. You've got to seize it with your own two hands and take advantage. Read the books, study the tapes, go back for your notes. Get ready to cash in on the spring. And now, there's a sense of emergency here. Here's why. Spring doesn't last that long. Take advantage of it. It's called take advantage of the spring. And there's also an urgency here. How many springs have you got in a lifetime? Not very many. Life is brief. At the longest, the Beatles wrote, life is very short. And for John Lennon, it was extra short. For Michael Landon, it was extra short. But it is short. There's an urgency here. Don't waste your springs. Don't just let them pass, hoping the time will pass. Take advantage. Last year, it was seize the moment. And I'm asking you now, this season, to seize the spring opportunity. You've got a new organization going. Seize the spring. You've got a new distributor going. Seize the spring. You've got a new life situation going. Seize the spring. Take advantage of it. Don't let it pass without giving it the best of your two hands and your attention. Number three. In the summer, learn to nourish and protect. We've got some major challenges now come summertime. One is to nourish our values. Take care of them. Feed them. Don't let them go hungry. Don't let them go wanting in nourishment and care. Then, here's something else we've got to do in the summer. Defend ourselves against the enemies. Summertime is a unique time. It's a time of opportunity. It's also a time of challenge. But whatever threatens you, I'm asking you to threaten it back. Take care of your responsibility, but don't take anything off anybody. If somebody wants to destroy your chances for a good future by their negative talk, negative thinking, putting it all down, I'm telling you, walk away if you have to walk away. Whatever threatens you, threaten it back. Whatever threatens your opportunity, threaten it back. Now, some of our enemies are on the outside. But here's the most important thing to understand. Some of our enemies are on the inside. Here's a quick list. Indifference. You've got to do battle with your own indifference. Boy, it's easy to coast, especially if you've accomplished something extraordinary. Now, somebody says, I got to relax. Here's the key. Not too long. The weeds will take all you plan if you rest too long. Don't rest too long. Indecision. You've got to make those decisions. The ones that don't turn out to be good give you experience to make better decisions. Don't let much time go by without making some decisions. The ones that you can make quickly, make them quickly. The ones that take time, take your time, but get those decisions made. Don't let indecision be an enemy robbing you of the future, emptying your bank account, leaving you with zero in the purse. Don't let that happen. The next one is doubt. Sure, there are doubts on the outside. People doubt that America is going to make it. People doubt that Europe's going to make it. People doubt that Russia's going to make it. Poland, Czechoslovakia, they doubt. The whole world is going to make it. But I'm asking you not to pick up all those doubts. I'm asking you to have some faith, have some courage, believe. Drive your doubts into a small corner. Don't let them loose like a mad dog driving you into a small corner. Don't doubt the future. Don't doubt the possibilities. 
Don't doubt the extraordinary gifts that your distributors bring to your organization. And most importantly, don't doubt yourself. If I've got miracle working power to change my life, so do you. If I've got the ability to change, so do you. If I've got the ability to read, so do you. If I can discover, so can you. If I can grow, you can grow. If I can develop, you can develop. If I can get an invitation like I got six years ago to help take something around the world, so can you. If I can stand on this platform, Idaho farm boy raised in obscurity, so can you. If the millionaire team can do it, president's team can do it. Walk off with the diamonds, the trophy, so can you. To a lot of people, ambition is kind of a mystery. The dictionary says it's an eager desire for distinction, power, or fame. But what does that really mean? Well, let's start with the word eager. All by itself, eager is kind of exciting. Kids are eager for their birthday parties. They expect to be the center of attention, get lots of presents, eat too much, I guess. Grown-ups are eager for birthdays too, unless, of course, they're embarrassed that the number of candles on the cake outnumber their achievements. But we can be eager to see a ball game, eager to see our kids in a dance recital, eager to see an old friend, eager to shop for a new car. Eager sounds like a lot of fun. But do you ever hear people say they are eager to live a better life, eager to have a better family, eager to make a lot of money? Probably not. And that's a problem because how I see it, living a better life, having a better family, and making a lot of money takes an eager desire. We have the remarkable ability to get exactly what we must have. But there is a difference between wishes and desires. We've all heard people say, oh, I wish I could just drop five pounds, or I want to be a little lighter. And we've probably said it ourselves, especially after a big holiday dinner of turkey and homemade pie and every other thing we can possibly stuff ourselves within one eight-hour period of time. And even though we may wish we could breathe a little easier in our clothing, we have to have the desire to exercise a little more and eat a little less. The, I wish I could lose weight, has to become, I have the eager desire to lose weight. I'm also sure you've heard people talk about wishing they had more money to pay the bills or take a vacation or just to take a little pressure off of life. But before their lifestyle can change, their wish needs to become a desire. If they really desired change, they wouldn't spend their evenings just watching TV and wishing they were doing something more. The backbone of an eager desire to change is discipline. True ambition is discipline, eager desire. It's that little part within us that says, if I want to be ready for that meeting tomorrow, I need to finish preparing for it today. If I want to make sure I can pay for my kid's college education, I need to start saving today. If I want a better life tomorrow, I need to start working on it today. Ambition is a minute-by-minute, day-by-day mentality. To have the ambition to work towards a better family life, a newer car, a bigger house, a financially secure future, you have to live it every moment. If living a successful life was easy, I'm sure more people would be successful. If just being ambitious was enough, I'm sure all of the broken, perplexed people in the world wouldn't be broken, perplexed. While most people spend most of their lives struggling to earn a living, a much smaller number seem to have everything going their way. Instead of just earning a living, the smaller group is busily working at building and enjoying a fortune. Everything just seems to work out for them. And here sits the much larger group, wondering in awe how life can be so unfair, complicated, and unjust. So, what's the major difference between the little group with so much and the larger group with so little? Despite all the factors that affect our lives, like the kind of parents we have, the schools we attended, the part of the country we grew up in, none has as much potential power for doing good as the ability to dream. Dreams are a projection of the kind of life we want to lead. Dreams can drive you. Dreams can make you skip over obstacles. When we allow our dreams to pull us, they unleash a creative force that can overpower everything in our way. To unleash this power, though, your dreams must be well-defined. Having a vague future won't motivate you much. Clear dreams are not fuzzy wishes. To truly achieve your dreams, to really feel driven by your future plans, your dreams must be vivid. William James, after thinking for years about what it means to be successful, described success as a combination of two things. First, an inner ideal, followed persistently with courage. 
This means setting a goal and having the determination to achieve it, no matter what. Promise yourself you'll keep learning and practicing until you succeed. Don't give up until you reach your goal, no matter how long it takes. Step by step, book by book, seminar by seminar, keep going until you make it. I'll do it or die. Second, achieving outer goals related to that ideal. You need both aspects to truly succeed. But James realized that the inner goal is more important than the outer one. As long as you're working towards your inner goal, success is possible. But if you give up on your inner vision, you'll never truly succeed. Until doesn't even matter. Now, maybe the person who's been working on a project for 10 years can be successful in his own right. If he's honestly working towards it, doing everything to make himself worthy of reaching the dream, really happy with where he is, doing it until then, maybe he is a success. It's a personal thing, going for it one step at a time, going for small accomplishments along the way, for however long it takes. So, let's think about this for a moment. What outside evidence or results or proof can be seen when you accomplish your goals one step at a time? You'll start to see things change around you. Little things, not major things, but little everyday things. Things you may not even notice unless you are paying attention. If you're one of those who'd rather stay up late and get up late, only to discover that your workplace doesn't fit your schedule, and you roll out of bed cursing the alarm clock every morning, maybe you could start with the little change of going to bed half an hour earlier than normal. And maybe you'll see in time, of course, you can't train your body overnight. Maybe you'll find out that you jump out of bed in a better mood, and that your day will start better, and that you'll get more done, and that the people around you that caused you problems aren't so hard to work with after all. It all starts by making one little change and adding to it every day. You see, you can't change what's going on around you without first changing what's going on within you. Start changing how you look at mornings, and sure enough, People will start changing how they look at you when you start changing how you think, how you act, how you treat others, and how you treat yourself. When you start responding instead of reacting to life, life will start responding to you. I'm telling you that you can do it with your lifestyle. You can do it with your sales career. You can do it with your management career. You can do it with any part of your life. You cannot believe what can happen in such a short period of time. Though, so, you ask yourself. What small changes can I start making today? Well, you can start in your car on your way to work. If you're sitting in stop and go traffic moving at about 15 miles per hour, look at the person sitting next to you and give them a smile, a thumbs up, or even wave. Now, some people might think you're a little strange, but hey, you'll feel better. And tomorrow when you get into the office, how about a big, cheery hello to the people at the front desk and everyone you see on the way to your office? And when you get home tonight, how about giving your wife, husband, and kids big hugs instead of collapsing on the sofa? When you start with the little things that make others happy and improve their day, you'll find that these little things add up to big ones. So, what happens when you start taking charge of your own personal happiness, your own life? Do you think that these little things will somehow make a difference in meeting your goals? You bet they will. You can't do it alone. You can't be successful by yourself. It's hard to find a rich hermit. You know, the ambitious person realizes that each of us needs all of us. Even if you've finalized the company's marketing plan or finished up the sales projections or even wrote the mission statement for the year to come, you really had the help of all those around you who tolerated and supported your need to be undisturbed or provided service to you during the project. Maybe you should thank those people every once in a while with a dinner certificate or a bouquet of flowers. After all, without your support team, you probably wouldn't be where you are today. You can't be successful by yourself. So, thank them. Thank those around you and let them know just how important they are to you, be it your office personnel, your family, or your friends. But thank you sure goes a long way. You don't have to worry about the winds that will most certainly blow around you, the obstacles, the negativity that will stand in your way. You don't have to worry about what other people will say. You just have to keep your mind on your course. Those winds may blow fast and furious, but if you know your path, if you know where you are going, they will help push you toward the dreams, goals, and treasures that you have already decided you're going after. Your goals will push you forward, ahead of the stormy weather. There are some amazing people around that we can learn from today. People who have already braved the storms and come out on top. People who are still alive today. 
People who started with nothing and ended up with something great. Famous people, not so famous people, maybe even people you know but don't know their stories. People who had an early vision and ambition. People who turned their focused dreams into the reality of success. Let's say you decided to take a trip, just a short one, maybe for a weekend. Let's say you want to go away to a place you've never been before. Wouldn't you want to find someone who had been there, ask them a few questions? What's the best way to get there? The safest route, the quickest route. What do I need to bring to be totally prepared? What fun things should I look for on the way? What dangers do I need to avoid? By talking with someone who has already been there, it'll make your trip that much more enjoyable. It's the same thing with life. By listening to those who are farther along in the journey you are interested in taking and learning from their successes and failures, you just might pick up something that will make your journey that much better. Listening to the stories of others can be motivating, captivating. They can provide that extra push you've been looking for. They can demonstrate what the power of ambition is truly all about. They've been there, their knowledge is valuable. And when you use that knowledge and motivation to take action, you'll gain momentum. Eventually, you will find that the key to motivation, true motivation, is right there inside you. You won't have to look elsewhere to get pumped up, turned on, charged up. With the right knowledge behind you, you will learn how to motivate yourself. With the right knowledge, you will find yourself becoming inspired on your own. To move forward, you must be motivated, inspired, and ambitious. You must have dreams and goals that fuel your ambition. But it's essential to understand that ambition is not about being greedy or selfish. It's not about getting ahead at the expense of others. Ambition is an eager desire to achieve, to do more for your family, and to prosper in health, wealth, and relationships. Ambition is not greed. It's an eager desire to get ahead in life. Desire is what you want for yourself. A bigger house, a better car, a fatter bank account, a better life. Ambition is how you get there. However, desire does not always translate into ambition. Desire might say, I want the tallest building in town. But the destructive side of desire might urge you to tear down all the other buildings. The alternative is to see it, dream it, and plan it. Put your team on it, work on it, go through all the steps to get there. Have the ambition to be the owner of the tallest building in town and go through all the right steps to achieve it. If you truly want it, have the skills and the patience to weather all the storms. Your ambition will lead you there. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. It takes time to bring value, but we do not get paid for time. So, the idea that I'm making about $20 an hour is not true. If it were, you could just stay home and have them send you the money. We don't get paid for time, we get paid for the value we bring. Now, since that's true, here's one of the key questions of my talk to you today. Is it possible to become twice as valuable to the marketplace and make twice as much money in the same time? The answer is yes. Could you become three times as valuable as you might be right now to the marketplace and make three times as much money in the same time? The answer is yes. Five times? Ten times? Of course. America is unique. It's a ladder to climb. It starts down here, let's say at $5 an hour, and it keeps going up. The top income last year was $80 million, the guy who runs Coca-Cola. Now, that's a heck of a ladder. That's why everybody wants to come here, right? The boat people are not headed for Vietnam. People haven't plotted and schemed for 50 years saying, if I could just get to Poland, everything would be okay. Not true. Everybody wants to come to America, and the reason is because we've got the best wind ever blowing in our favor. We've got the best economic opportunity anybody's had in six and a half thousand years. And all you have to do is understand it and take advantage of it. Now, there are some key questions to ask here. Why would the marketplace pay someone only five dollars an hour? Very simple answer. They're not very valuable to the marketplace. Now, we must underline to the marketplace. This person might be a very valuable brother, yes. A valuable member of the family, valuable. A valuable member of the church, of course. A valuable citizen of the country, yes. Valuable in the sight of God, no doubt. We're all of equal value in the sight of God. But if you're not very valuable to the marketplace, you don't get much money. You say, well, it shouldn't be that way. Well then, you've got to start your own country. 
You know, this one's been in process for 200 years, and this is the best we've been able to come up with so far. But here's the key. You don't have to stay here. Now, there was a big debate in Congress last year that this $5 was not enough. Should be six, should be six, should be six. But we don't need legislation. Six is already on this ladder. The next step up, you know, if you work for McDonald's, they'll pay you $5 an hour to take out the trash. If you whistle while you take out the trash, they'll pay you $6 an hour. So, we don't need that legislation. You just need to take lessons on how to whistle and have a good attitude as you begin to climb this ladder. Why would the marketplace pay some people $50 an hour? Answer. Evidently, they must be more valuable to the marketplace, 10 times more valuable. And is that possible for someone to be 10 times more valuable and earn $50 an hour instead of 5? The answer is yes. That's what America is all about. Why would the marketplace pay some people $500 an hour? Evidently, this person must be much more valuable to the marketplace. And would the marketplace pay one person $80 million for one year's work? And the answer is, of course. If you helped a company make a billion, would they pay you $80 million? I'm telling you, it is possible. And that's why America is so exciting. That's why this financial ladder is so exciting. It's possible for all of this to come true for all of you. No matter where you start, as a student in school, just getting started out there in the workplace. This is all possible for you. Here's what's important in personal development. Learn from other people. We learn number one by observation. We learn what we see. We watch people that are successful in what they do. In sports, we watch their disciplines. In business, we watch their disciplines. By observation, what we can see. The reason I created this video is something that you could see. Someone's experience is translated for you. Second, we learn by what we hear. I've got some of my lectures on cassette tape, so you can take them with you wherever you go and learn by listening. Turn your car into a mobile classroom and listen. And then listen to the sermon on Sunday morning. Listen to the lectures. Listen to the teacher. Listen to someone who's got something good to say. And then, number three, is vitally important in personal development, and that is read all the books. All the books you can possibly read in your lifetime. Mr. Shove got me started on my library. I've got one of the better libraries. Haven't read everything in it, but I feel smarter just walking in it. My library, at least I was smart enough to buy it. Now, I've got to be smart enough to read it. Then, of course, I've got to be smart enough to decide what's valuable and then do it. But this one is very important. Become a good reader. I started reading the books, attending the classes, making sure that I got in front of people that had something good to say. And then I started keeping a journal. One of the major things my teacher taught me was to keep a journal. He said, don't trust your memory. If you hear something good, just make a little note and write it down. Now, at first, I took notes on pieces of paper, torn off corners and backs of old envelopes, and it didn't serve me well. You know, thrown in a drawer. Then I learned to keep a journal, a bound copy of all my notes. So, I would suggest you do the same thing. Things that impress you, a poem that impresses you, when you attend a class, some of the ideas that impress you, jot them down. You read something in a magazine, write some ideas, it goes out, put them in your journal. Keep a good journal the rest of your life. This will serve you well. My journals make up a significant portion of my own library. And if you saw my library and saw my journals, I tell you what, you'd have to say, this is the library. And these are the journals of a very serious student. No wonder Mr. Ron is invited to lecture and speak on his experiences around the world. So, I want the same thing to happen to you. Value capture that you can resort to later. Go back over it and review it, and let it become valuable to you. So, that's my first subject, personal development. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Develop the skills, learn the lessons, take the classes, absorb all that is being taught to you these days, and then later on, of course, you can sort it out, what's valuable to you and how to refine it for your business and for your life and for your future. But the main thing is to get it and start this process of personal change, personal development. And let me say in one more time, if you will change, everything will change for you. You'll never be the same. You'll keep growing. As you look back on a few months, Look back on a few years, 
You won't believe the progress you can make economically, your relationship with your family, your friends, and whether you're in sports or economics or whatever. I'm telling you that whole process of committing yourself for personal change, personal value, can really make your life unique and worthwhile.